Today on the IoT Show, we'll talk about a brand new feature to the Azure IoT Hub service. That new feature is called Device Streams and allows to establish tunnel communication over TCP between services in the cloud and uh, applications on devices. So basically, you'll be able to securely and safely authenticate through IoT Hub and communicate over TCP between an application and a device. And Reza, the PM for that new feature on IoT Hub, comes to the show to talk to us about it. Hi everyone, this is the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today we have Reza to discuss a new feature in IoT Hub, which is called Device Streams. Reza, thanks for coming on the show again. Absolutely. We had you recently. Uh, for those who don't know, know you, actually, can you uh, introduce yourself and tell people what you're doing within the Azure IoT team? Absolutely. My name is Reza Sharafat, and I'm a Senior Program Manager in the Azure IoT Hub platform team. Mm -hmm. So we work on the uh, IoT Hub platform primitives, many of the messaging features, uh, remote, mes uh, remote procedure call, and the new one that we are taking to public preview, which is called Device Streams. And I'm here to uh, give a yeah. quick demo and introduction to that. For you. Awesome. So yeah, we'll get to know that new feature of IoT Hub. IoT Hub is growing every Absolutely. day with new features that are dedicated to IoT scenario. I understand that this one is something that's been asked by customers uh, for enabling specific scenarios that we, we're going to actually see. So what is Device Streams about? Absolutely. So as I said, this is a brand new feature that is that we are uh, adding to the uh, Azure IoT Hub portfolio of features. And uh, it solves actually a pretty common uh, problem that customers have. Huh. Uh, a very common scenario that we have seen customers uh, deploy their devices in is inside of private networks. These might be networks inside of enterprises or uh, mm -hmm. factory floor, local area networks, uh, or manufacturing plants, etc. As, as a result of the security uh, requirements on these networks, in many cases there are, de uh, there are firewalls deployed mm -hmm. at the perimeters of these networks yep. to block all the incoming connections from outside. And yet there, are, uh, there is a large need for uh, different scenarios, so for example, when operators need to maintain some of these devices and service these devices mm -hmm. from a remote site. These okay. might be operators from a third, party a third party company that need to access the devices uh, and remotely connect to their network initially before uh, being able to perform the functionality that they need to uh, perform. Okay. There are other scenarios as well. So for example, when uh, you might need to do um, diagnostic on the device, you might need to access the diagnostic portals that are mm -hmm. deployed on the devices, or might even need to access the file system on the device, yeah. access the logs okay. that are uh, mm -hmm. sitting on the file system in order to do various functions and uh, uh, vario uh, to support various scenarios. Yeah. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, the security of these networks is a top concern for, for customers. And uh, the presence of the firewall is uh, basically there to ensure security of the network. So as a result, yep. there is a uh, conflict, obviously, because the firewall is blocking the incoming connections, mm -hmm. and, uh, and yet there is a need uh, to access the devices. Yep. And it's something that IoT Hub, once the device is authenticated and connected to IoT Hub, we have this tunnel for uh, communicating over various types of protocols, MQTT or MQP, depending on what you choose, mm -hmm. to transmit telemetry data or to synchronize the device twin, which is a JSON file. Yeah. Uh, so what you're describing, actually, are about existing protocols that you would need to implement in between a backend and a device mm -hmm. that traditionally would go on specific ports that are closed by the, the firewall, if I understand That's correctly, right? right? Okay. That's right. So as you mentioned very correctly, in fact, uh, IoT devices that are home to uh, an IoT hub already have an outbound connection uh, to Azure Cloud, and particularly yep. to IoT Hub. And what we are uh, uh, enabling through device streams is to leverage that outbound connection that's already established from the device mm -hmm. to the cloud to also be used for, in, uh, for receiving traffic over incoming connections uh, on the device side. Okay. So particularly, as I'm showing in this, uh, in this diagram, even though these external services that might need to access the device are blocked um, under a direct connection line, mm -hmm to the device, they may still use device streams to rendezvous in the cloud side. And they uh, basically, particularly the device and the service side, both connect to IoT Hub. And IoT Hub acts as a proxy, basically, that uh, transfers uh, traffic between these two entities and uh, from the device to the service and back from the service to the device. Makes sense. And, and the service application has to be authenticated also yep. to IoT Hub, so meaning that ITM knows the two entities and, and actually can ensure that your end-to-end -end application or implementation is totally safe. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, 
device streams is a very much a security focused feature mm -hmm. and encryption and authentication of the tunnel that exists uh, on both sides of the device streams is something that happens transparently under the hood mm -hmm. without uh, much involvement from the application side. Okay. So let me go over and quickly um, review some of the advantages that device yep. streams uh, bring to the customers. First and foremost, uh, device streams enable end-to-end -end connectivity to IoT devices in a firewall-friendly manner. Okay. As I mentioned uh, earlier um, in our conversation, it is really uh, the question of how to connect to IoT devices in a way that does not compromise the security of the network the devices are on yep. or the security of the devices. So it's really important to be able to um, avoid opening up of uh, firewall ports in a random fashion or uh, avoid uh, complicated setups that sometimes might be needed uh, through virtual private networks mm -hmm. or other setups that, uh, that are kind of a substitute uh, to device streams. The other b benefit that device streams offer, as you again uh, correctly mentioned, is authentication yep. uh, and enforcement of authentication. Both sides of a device stream need to authenticate with their corresponding IoT Hub credentials. So it ensures that uh, not any uh, endpoint in the, in the open internet can connect to a device. Only those that have access to the secrets of IoT Hub um, are able to communicate and establish these types of tunnels. The third benefit is encryption of the communication line uh, over device streams. Basically, all the application data that is sent over device streams um, is encrypted by default. This is particularly true regardless of the fact whether the application uses encryption or not. Mm -hmm. Even the mm -hmm. application, if they transfer just uh, pure text messages, yep. and in plain text, uh, we encrypt them over the channels both between the device and IoT Hub, as well as the service and IoT Hub. But, but that stays transparent for the actual application That's that right. is going through that tunnel, yes. right? So uh, the device side sees the bytes as they were sent from the service side, mm -hmm. and the service side uh, sees the bytes as they were sent from the device side. Right. So, but in between, like we take the package, encrypt it, That's like right. ensure the authentication first, like encrypt the message, pass it over, decrypt it, yeah. through our SDKs, I suppose, on the device side of things, That's right. and then we have the application that accesses yeah. it. Okay. So traffic over the network, <coughs> over these uh, tunnels, are encrypted. But once the device or service received the byte stream that the other side has sent, it's decrypted and is uh, basically handed over to the application in its original form. Okay. And finally, I want to mention that uh, device streams is compatible with the TCP IP stack. Basically, any client-server application that uh, might run on the service and client that uses TCP IP can tunnel their traffic uh, through device streams. That's a that, lot. That is quite a bit. That's yes. a lot of uh, functionalities. Like, and one that comes to mind immediately is SSH, right? I wanna, That's right. I want to log into my log into my device remotely to do the task that you were mentioning. Mm -hmm. um, well, anyways, you have demos coming up, right? Absolutely. So, so we'll see that. Okay. We'll see that in a bit. But as you mentioned, uh, both uh, off-the-shelf applications such yeah. as SSH or other. Uh, applications that are built into uh, operating system platforms mm -hmm. such as remote desktop can tunnel their traffic uh, through device streams and in the demo I'll cover those. Okay. But this is obviously, I want to emphasize that this is not only restricted to these applications, even mm -hmm. though these are among the most commonly uh, uh, demanded uh, scenarios of customers to, um, to ensure secure connectivity to the mm -hmm. device, it still uh, is a um, tip of the iceberg. And okay. as you said, uh, there are various types of applications that the customers can develop on their own and use device streams, but there are uh, various types of uh, standards-based applications yep. like the yep. uh, HTTP, HTTPS, yep. that can also uh, leverage device streams in, the, in a very similar yep. fashion. So I have a question that might be uh, uh, a bit tricky, uh, and, uh, but, but being in, in public preview, I think it's, it's pretty fair, but do we need to expect a, a tax in terms of performance in these communication? Because instead of going directly, you're basically getting a encrypted, safer communication, but it, like I would assume that theoretically you have a little tax in terms of the performance uh, yeah. of that communication, right? Yeah, uh, that is true. There is some um, uh, basically extra uh, data packets that need to be trans mm -hmm. transmitted. And particularly in terms of the end-to-end -end, uh, latency, there mm -hmm. might be a tax that, yeah. that needs to be paid. Yeah. But minor for the benefits of, Def of having the authentication, the encryption taken care of by IT yeah. Hub. And as we uh, basically introduce this feature, and over time we're going to introduce it in new regions, okay. and if, I, uh, if customers ensure that their hub 
is located in the same region that the service and the device are physically located, mm -hmm. then they can minimize the impact of these okay. types of latencies. Fair enough. But uh, as I will show in the demo, in fact, uh, the IT Hub instance that I'm using is in the central uh, US region, yeah. which is quite yeah. uh, away from us. Yeah. Uh, and because um, we are in Bosnia, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are <laughs> a little bit even further. Uh, no, we're in the US. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, but um, the applications that yeah. we use uh, use device streams for are mostly interactive. And for example, in the SSH case, you will see that the SSH prompt uh, quickly shows up. Mm -hmm. And there is very negligible amount yeah. of delay, yeah. at least uh, and, in this demo. And setup. once again, you know, for the value in terms of security it adds yes. and the control you get over the devices and so on, I think it's totally acceptable to have a little tax and performance, right? That's right. Yeah. If the compromise is to open up firewall ports, uh, which in some cases is absolutely a, a no-go no, no. for it's organizations, <laughs> yeah. yes, yeah. Uh, that is the um, uh, that is the alternative. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, let me quickly uh, go over what it uh, mm -hmm. entails to establish a device streams. Uh, it's, um, I'm not going to get into much of the details, yeah. but at, the, at a high level, I want to mention that the device and service are uh, entities that, in a, from a traditional perspective, they were already connected to IIT Hub, and particularly yeah. they are uh, interacting with what we call the IIT Hub's main endpoint. Okay. When uh, the service wants to initiate a connection to a device, they perform a handshake, and as part of these handshake protocols, uh, they establish a secondary connection each to a second endpoint, which we call a streaming endpoint. And right. that is the endpoint where the actual data bytes uh, transmitted over a device stream is, uh, is sent over. Okay. And I'm showing that uh, at a very high level in this diagram. At the end of this process, each uh, device and service uh, through our SDK get access to a WebSocket client, mm -hmm. which they can use uh, to send or receive um, <coughs> data over. And this uh, 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 WebSocket is particularly connected <coughs> to the, the streaming endpoint and offers the same level of guarantees and reliability and ordering guarantees that, uh, that are on par with uh, TCP IP. Okay. So from that aspect, ev any byte that they write to the stream is received from the other side as is and uh, without any reordering or reliability yeah. issues. You mentioned the use of RSDKs. So on the service side of things, we, you would use the, the t like the, the known as uh, service SDK mm -hmm. for IT Hub. And on the device side, you would use the device SDK. And I would assume that someone already has an application that connects to IT Hub can benefit from that new feature by uh, upgrading the version of that SDK uses in his application and then leveraging that new endpoint and set of features, right? Uh, right. Yeah. So basically, uh, applications have uh, two ways to use device streams. One is through RSDK, yeah. which means that they can programmatically integrate into RSDK and mm -hmm. uh, start calling our APIs okay. to initiate these uh, device streams, okay. do the handshake, mm -hmm. and uh, ultimately uh, receive the WebSocket client in order to send and receive data. Okay. That is uh, integration path number one. Okay. But for applications such as SSH uh, and RDP and the applications that are more off the shelf, and uh, customers normally don't have access to their source code or mm. for various reasons are not willing to make Makes any uh, yeah. source code changes. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a model of using uh, proxies that is actually involved in the demo that I'm going to show uh, in the uh, okay. towards the end of this Am I uh, actually going too fast? <laughs> you are definitely going fast. Uh, well, that's good because that means that you're actually presenting what I'm interested in. <laughs> that's right. So uh, this demo uh, demonstrates the use of device streams um, for the SSH scenario, which um, as I'm showing in this diagram here, has two entities involved. One is the device side, which actually runs the SSH daemon, the mm -hmm. server side of the SSH protocol, and the other one shown on the right is the SSH client, where the user tries to uh, run and log in mm -hmm. and acts as the client side of the SSH protocol. Okay. As I mentioned, for various reasons, the direct connectivity between these two endpoints uh, can be blocked, for example, through the use of firewalls. And now we want to apply device streams as a technology that enables end-to-end um, -end connectivity between these two programs uh, while uh, rendezvousing the traffic uh, through IoT Hub so that uh, we can have end -to -end, secure end-to-end -end connectivity without violating the uh, organization's policies around uh, the firewalls, yeah. uh, firewall rules. So uh, what uh, we have distributed as part of our samples, uh, and uh, there are also accompanying uh, quick start guides on how to set this up 
and, and run the samples, mm -hmm. is two programs that we call uh, device local proxy, shown here in orange, mm -hmm. and uh, service local proxy, shown here in blue. So these are the programs that, uh, that take the integration path number one, and mm -hmm. they integrate with our SDK programmatically. They okay. start calling our APIs. Under the hood, they, uh, they interact with IoT Hub and create device streams without the knowledge of SSH daemon or SSH client in this, okay. uh, in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, interaction lines number one and two correspond to uh, basically the same handshake workflow that I had in the previous slide. But now, when the user is ready to uh, create an actual SSH session to start mm -hmm. accessing the device, uh, the proxy programs also act as um, client and servers for these two uh, SSH daemon as well as the SSH client. I'm going to show this uh, in um, using these two uh, extra arrows. Okay. In arrow that's tagged with number three, the <coughs> server service local proxy is acting as a server listening on a port, in this case an arbitrarily configurable port, port number 2222 on the local host of the service uh, service host. Mm -hmm. And the user uses their SSH client to connect to this port okay. instead of directly going and uh, uh, interacting with the SSH daemon over port 22. On the other hand, in the line that is shown here using um, tag number four, the device local proxy acts as a client to the SSH daemon and connects to the SSH daemon over port 22, which is the standard port for SSH. Okay. Now, if, uh, if you look at the diagram, we have end-to-end -end connectivity between the SSH client program on the right mm -hmm. that goes through this, uh, the service local proxy okay. through IoT Hub down to device local proxy and ultimately to the SSH daemon as the, as the server side yep. of, the, mm, of the interaction. Yep. And, and you were mentioning that these are provided as open source samples, right? That's right. So don't freak out. Like the, the implementation of all these this me mechanisms and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and chains of events is something that actually you can get pretty easily done using the open source samples that we provide. That's right. right. Yeah. So uh, the programs are themselves very simple. So to demonstrate uh, this interaction, mm -hmm. uh, we have, there is not much magic involved. Really. Nice. And uh, the, the users can look at the code and in fact apply it in other places as well. Perfect. So um, what I'm going to demonstrate is I'm going to use my uh, Windows laptop mm -hmm. to host in fact both the device and service. Uh, but unfortunately, since Windows, I'm not running a SSH server, mm -hmm. I'm connecting to a different machine that has SSH. Okay. I am going to bring up uh, three uh, terminals, terminal number one, two, and three from, uh, from the left. The first terminal shows the um, uh, terminal on the device, represents okay. the terminal okay. on the device. And I'm going to run um, the device local proxy over there. Okay. As part of the configuration of the uh, device local proxy, I'd like to um, show that I'm providing three pieces of information. If I can increase the font slightly. Yep. I'm providing the device uh, connection string, which is the authentication string used to interact with IoT Hub. I'm providing a host name for where the actual SSH uh, service is running. Mm -hmm. And in this case, as I'm, uh, I mentioned, I'm connecting to a Linux box. So I've provided the IP address for that box. And ultimately, I'm providing the port used by that application. And in this case, uh, SSH uses port 22. Okay. So these are the three pieces of information configured on the device side. On the service side that I have in the, in the middle, again, I'm providing uh, three pieces of information. The first one is the connection string, okay. the serv service connection string, mm -hmm. again, for the service side to authenticate yep. with IT Hub. Yep. Then I'm providing the device ID that it needs to connect to. Okay. This, is, this corresponds to the same uh, ID that the device authenticates with. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, I'm providing a port number, which is an arbitrary port that uh, the service local proxy will listen on for incoming SSH connection from SSH yeah. um, from the user. Okay. So don't pause the video and try to get these uh, connection strings, because anyways, the IT Hub related to that demo will be long gone by then. Right? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so the third terminal over here is the terminal that I'm going to use uh, to run SSH client. Okay. So let's go uh, one terminal at a time from the left. I'm going to use .NET run to run the project uh, of this sample program. Uh -huh. I'm going to do the same in the, in the middle terminal 
for the service side. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the device local proxy is configured to connect to a remote terminal uh, and this address and this port. Mm -hmm. And the service local proxy similarly is ready and listening on the local host port 2222. Okay. Now I'm going to use the third terminal mm -hmm. to SSH to where the service local proxy is lo uh, listening on, which is local host on port 2222. And I'm going to provide my own username. And I do have a typo. Local host. There you go. Real demos. Yes. <laughs> There you go. Okay. Now I've already uh, connected to mm -hmm. the local proxy, and this is actually the SSH prompt that is coming from the SSH server. So I'm going to provide my credentials. Oh. I, think you're wrong, I was wrong not window. typing yeah. in the right thing. And yeah, Boom. and I'm in. This is the SSH prompt that is being uh, served through device streams to the um, uh, to the client program here. Yeah, and as we can see, the the person using that SSH client sees no difference from a regular connection to a remote machine That's using right. SSH, right? So other than connecting to local host on port twenty two twenty two, yep. there has been no change on the on the client side. And normally, applications uh, should be written in a way that that is only a matter of a configuration uh, and change of configuration for those programs. Great, great demo. So the call to action is for people to go try out this public preview Definitely. of the uh, device streams feature of IT Hub. Thanks, Reza, for coming on the show. Thanks, Absolutely. guys, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for the show.